All right. Um, back at it again. Horseman Academy for October. Um, and I'm excited about the guests that we have lined up, specifically our first one. Um, shout out to Girl Boss Suites. Shout out to Tiara um, connecting this. Um, I'm really looking forward to the conversation. But again, before I get started, um, you can always go follow us at The Poor Horseman on Instagram, The Poor Horseman on YouTube, um, Poor Horseman Pod on TikTok. And then, hell, we might get a LinkedIn soon because we, we doing some business around here. So um, definitely want y'all to be able to tap in and join us um, as much as you can for these conversations. So um, today we've got a special guest and I'll let um, Cynthia introduce herself, but she um, has an incredible business that she's built, um, not only been able to get out of the business. That's a conversation that I always have. Uh, many of us are entrepreneurs, but really we just gave ourselves another job. She's been able to get out of that, um, grow the business some, but all the while also getting into technology and software. Um, so Cynthia of no dollar, no cent. Because I didn't want to mess that up. I didn't want to mess that up. Please introduce yourself to the audience today. Yes, yes. My name is Cynthia Smith, also known as No Dollars, No Cent. Uh, I am the proud owner of CNJ Tax Services, CNJ Tax Franchise, also Seismic Tax Solutions, which is my tax software, and Bohemian Glow, and the list goes on. I've been in business for the past 15 years with my tax software, well, with my tax office, and with my tax software, it's been the past eight years. Uh, also, with my skincare line, Bohemian Glow, I need to try that out. Um, that has been going since 2021, um, and I've started getting into that, and we'll talk about that a little later. No, nah, no, nah, so that's exciting. So first, um, I, I'm actually more excited, too, because... There's several things that we could talk about, you know, um, not to mention your growth that you've done in tax preparation is now going into software as well. Also, your skincare line. That's new. I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So we definitely got to deep dive into that also. And then it just sounds like you've been on an entrepreneur journey for almost two decades now. Like you've been doing some form of entrepreneurship yes. for about two decades. Yes. OK, so so give us give us the backstory. Um, are you from Houston? Where are you originally from? Okay, I am from Houston. Okay. Born and raised. What side of town? What side of town? North side of town. Uh, okay, north side. Okay, okay. Trinity okay. Gardens, where the flowers grow. Okay. Curry Road and on to Jensen Park. So not too far from the downtown area. Okay, so native Houstonian then. Yes. Um, been here, um, has set up all are all your businesses based out of Houston as well? Is this like the, the home base for everything or have you kind of branched out to different locations also? Well, God bless. Uh, I am now uh, in Louisiana. Congratulations. Uh, we also have a few clients in Atlanta as well. Not many. Okay. Um, but we are working to uh working on growing in uh, into other towns okay okay so what what whereabouts in louisiana because we're my family we're from Opelousas lafayette so so whereabouts in louisiana uh, lake charles okay lake charles yeah so right right at the road you know yes. um getting across that so people y'all don't know getting across the bridge on i-10 to get into lake charles is the worst experience for a driver uh, at any time of day you could be backed up for an hour and a half right there yeah i know that's happened i know that's happened to you getting out there so i do not like driving. <laughs> I'm not that girl. <laughs> I don't care if it's two hours. If I can get there in 30 minutes on a plane. You got but the, sometimes it takes longer at the airport. Yeah, but for me not to be behind the wheel and have to drive. So you tell them you fly to Dallas. I do. Oh, see, I, see, so Dallas is about my cutoff. Like, I'm comfortable with doing that three and a half hours in the car. Anything past that, I want to fly. Yeah, I just want to get there. But but you sit in the airport for an hour before I can you go. In the airport, <laughs> nothing like a cocktail. Nah, them, them clubs are serious. Yeah, no. So I give you that. Yeah, I, I, I definitely give you that. I, I definitely will give you that. Okay, okay. So let's get into it. Um, native Houstonian. What high school? Uh, I started at Cashmere High School. Okay, Cashmere. Okay. And then I went over and I graduated from Jeff Jefferson Davis High. Okay, okay. So nor true North Side. Yes. Yeah, true North Side. Okay. So um, from there. Um, did you navigate to any other education or did you jump right into work? How, how did you go from there? So what I did was um, I am a young mother. I had my twins at 18. Okay. Um, I was blessed with my twins and they actually uh, molded my life. I was in community college. My aunt Cynthia did not allow me not to go to school. I understand. At all. And then all of a sudden I got into the oil and gas field and it started being life changing. Yeah. And yeah. what I went to school for, which was communication did not fit what 
I was able to be blessed with, which was information management. Oh, nice. Okay, so you got into oil, and you got into oil and gas, it sounds like, at a good time. Because yeah. I can remember when barrels of oil were $140. So you, you got in when there were boatloads of money being made yes. in the oil and gas industry. Well, you can talk your check. Yeah, yeah, at, at any moment. And then, you know, of course, we had a few periods of time where there were some slow periods. Maybe um, conflicts in the Middle East may have changed some of yes, the that. dynamics. But... You were able to take advantage of that period of time when things were great. Yes, oh. it was definitely a blessing. The oil and gas was good to my children, good to me. It got my kids through school, and I made quite a bit. In yeah. The oil and, gas. and anybody could. If you were in those timings, of course, it had its ups and downs. I did go through one layoff, but I was picked up for another job not even a week later. Yeah. And actually was making more money. I understood the navigations in the oil and gas full-time versus contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had children, so I went the contract route and basically had the boosted um, hourly pay. Yeah, yeah. So you learned the game early then because most people don't get that. Mm -hmm. They assume that you want that paid full-time job with those benefits where you can get the contract and still get the benefits. Exactly. Like most people don't even think take that, but it's a risk though. It is with the contract because you can be, um, well, I mean, we're at will state anyway, but you can be let go easier in the contract path than you are in the full. So, so how did you kind of navigate that? I looked at it like, like this. Okay. This is the job. I'm information management for this project. They're paying me 75 to a hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. I knew in my head, okay, if they lay me off, because I can still pay into my 401k, I can still work overtime. I never signed a salary cap. I always signed an hourly contract. Yeah. So, and I would basically sit on the clock for 10 hours. <laughs> I start at six, end at four, so I can be at the football game for the 20. Yeah. Have my computer. They can ask me to work late. I was going to work late. I had my laptop in my, my lap, watched the Twins play football, sitting on the clock. Yeah, yeah. Hey, they were on, on the honesty program, and I was just as honest with my laptop open. Hey, you got to make sure you take advantage of that time. And, and so it sounds like you already had a, a spirit of, hey, I'm going to make this work in my benefit. And then in that way, not only am I doing good work for my job, but I also know I'm doing good work for my family. Yeah. Like you're able to um, not sacrifice things that a lot of people may have had to mm -hmm. if they would have looked at their work differently. Right. So so what lessons maybe that you take from oil and gas that you started to implement into the work that you're doing now? So what I took from oil and gas was the corporate structure, the way they did things, um, proper management skills, a skill set that was needed in my office because my office became a full-time opp uh, opportunity for eight employees. So I took what I learned there, the basics of even the back end of filing documents, um, system, system management, um, back end, metadata. Uh, I basically poured that into what we do now at the tax office and our organization and how we run things. We run things on a corporate sector, whereas we have policy, we have company policies and procedures in place. We have things that you sign. We have contracts in place. Yeah. We, you know, exactly what I learned for the 20 years that I was on board in the oil and gas field, I basically poured all that knowledge into my company to run a, a full-time I want to be a Fortune 500 company. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're going to speak that into existence. So, yeah, we we going to say that. Now, now, tell me, like, now that's a that's a big pivot. You went from oil and gas to, was it tax preparation first or the skin line? Tax preparation first. Okay, so tax preparation first. What, what made you go from the comfort of oil and gas to the risk and competitive nature? Because there's a lot of people mm -hmm. in your space. What what made you take that, that on? So, I... I said before, the the boys, um, the twins were young. I was a single parent. Okay. Uh, they played all sports. I had to keep them busy. But to keep them busy cost a lot of money. So, therefore, and I compensated for the absentee of a, a parent. So, I overly exerted. I, I, I spent a lot of time with letting them know that he's not missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So understand, understand. Therefore, Back in 2006, I'm like, okay, the twins have to fly here. They have to do this. They have to do this. 
okay, I'm making $75,000 a year. I bought my first home. I had car note bills. They had to go after school care. That's $1,000. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what can I do? I didn't want to pay. My cousin was charging me like $1,000 to prepare my taxes. I was like, I need that $1,000. <laughs> so I got in there and started figuring it out myself. Okay. Uh, once I did it myself, my mom was like, you got your money? She said, well, do mine. Wait, so wait. So once you got a refund, people came to you and said, hey, how'd you figure this out? Yes. Okay. They didn't okay. even ask no questions. <laughs> they knew the deposit hit. <laughs> once the deposit hit, everybody was good. You know, our, you know, our community around tax time, you know, we be, we be waiting. Like, yeah, we, and, we, and we wanted that first day it's available. We, we yes. need our money now. Yes. You know, so, uh, so it already seemed like maybe people trusted you just in general. Yes. Okay. They, okay. they knew I had... I had it in me, okay. you know, because even before the tax preparation business, I, and I don't want to put this out there. I used to sell purses on eBay. Oh, come on. Come on. So you've so been I, hustling. I, yeah, 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 I've been, yeah. I've been you know, they wasn't real. <laughs> I had the phony balonies, but the girls bought them. They came and got the, but I got, I wear the real deal now. No, nah, no, nah, I'm going to have, have to check. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to have to check this bag before we leave. This, this I, real shit. I'm going to know the real deal. <laughs> I, know, I had so. the Louis Vuitton. <laughs> With the cherries on them. <laughs> so, therefore, <laughs> the girls got the purses, but I sold them on eBay. And then eBay caught on and shut me down. Oh, okay, okay. So, then yeah. I was like, okay, Cynthia, these kids, they, they're not stopping. So, I started doing tax prep, and I had two people believe in me, uh, which was my mom. Well, three, my mom and uh, the twins' aunt. Although okay. their dad was absent. Me and her were close friends. And they would see their aunt and their grandparents every day and never saw their father. Um, she trusted me. Once she trusted me, she told her friend at Centerpoint. Her friend told her cousin. The cousin, to this day, get his taxes done for free. He wrote about 300 Centerpoint employees to me to get their taxes done. Wow. My business ran off a of word of mouth. I never told a soul on social media. None of my business, no one knew. My business solely ran off of word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. For all those years. But I'm still working. I still have my job. But my job had flexibility. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. when it was time to do somebody's taxes, I go to my spreadsheet, open my spreadsheet, okay, type it in, go to a meeting room, put my calendar, <laughs> invite that I had a meeting, which I was actually doing somebody's taxes. And you had a meeting. Yeah, we, we know. I had a meeting. Yeah. Did a few taxes, go back to work. Yeah, yeah. They would send everything by email, although then I didn't have the proper credentials. I end up basically teaching myself and then doing research later. But then I, I worked it up yeah. until I couldn't work it anymore. And it wasn't that I couldn't work it anymore. You know, I have a really close relationship with God. Yeah. I have my own personal relationship with him. And when God told me to come off my job and trust him, and I did not. I started having issues after all these years. I was having issues at work. In 20 years, I've never had issues. I've always been a manager uh, at work, and I never had issues. But it came to me, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. And when I was not obedient, I had the problems. But I was worried because the job gave me the stability. that That was my crutch. Also, that was what I depended on to these boys have made it to college now. Yeah. So I have other things to pay for. One of my sons, one of the twins were sickly when he came up. So I didn't know if he was going to need a surgery um, before Obamacare came along. No one private would insure him because of his medical history. Yeah. And yeah. his job gave me that stability. All of a sudden, OK, Obamacare came. They gave Devon insurance. Uh, so now you had that lifeline that you, you didn't that you didn't and I know. Still stayed at the job, yeah, and didn't pay that. Okay, pay. God knew that was that was my worry. Yeah, He gave me what I was looking for. Yeah, I still not do what He said. Yeah, and I start having issues like a ripple effect. Okay, okay. But when I trusted Him and walked away from the job, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I experienced overflow out of this world, and it's nothing that I can explain. Oh, did social media do it? I'm not going to lie to you. No, it didn't. Yeah. Did they do it? No. God did it. Yeah. It, it's always, um, you know, God will always replace something that's you've left with something with greater abundance. Like, it, it's always that way, especially if it's in his in alignment yeah. with what's going on. So, 
and hearing you talk, especially about your your, your boys, it, it, it sounds like you just made sacrifices for them. Yes. Because you were in a position where, at the minimum, you were going to make sure they were taken care of. Yes. And I don't think people understand often the sacrifice that one parents, but especially a single parent, mm -hmm. a, a single mother takes on and to get them to college. And we, we talked a little before. It sounds like they're healthy, happy, yeah. going on with their life. Mm -hmm. And I just want to congratulate you on that. Thank you. Because I... I, I told you I started over. You know, I got a I got a three year old at the house, so I, you know, I I would have loved to have a, a daughter right now. Yeah. I'm blessed though. I'm blessed. She's a lot. She's a lot though. But I I am blessed. So I can only imagine, um, you know, just the challenges, the sacrifices you have to make. You talking about bringing your computer to their games and things like that to make sure um, that's big. But but I did want to hit on something. You did what I tell a lot of people to do. Don't leave that job while you've got flexibility and stability. You can build your business while you're working. Yes. But there will be that point where you've got to make a decision. It sounds like to you, God was knocking on your door. Yes. And when you made that decision, tell us about some of the abundance that happened. Um, <clears throat> when I made that decision and stepped out on faith, believing in him, my tax office went from seeing 700 clients to 2,000 clients. My organization went from three stores and me trying to buy all the eight stores up to actually having people who believed in my vision, believed in my brand. And that says a lot to me that they believed in this C&J tax service brand yeah. to want to be a franchise store, to grow into 10 stores. And from that, it grew the software. And I went from only me and my franchises using the software to now I have a hundred different other people using the software and they resell the software. We went from 10 EFINs to 150 EFINs up under my one business. Wow. Wow. So it, it God, God is doing his Yeah, thing. yeah. No, nah, yeah, yeah. That's phenomenal. And just to, to hear that and um, see that this is just a start even. Like there, there's much more to come. Now, we know you got tax preparation. You jumped into that. G give me a little bit about what you snuck in there, that skin line, because I hadn't heard of this. Okay. So yeah. what's going on? Yeah. So during <laughs> COVID, during COVID, while sitting at home, I still had the job then. Okay. My mind is always busy. Okay. Um, I got to a point where I felt like I mastered the tax business. I mastered where it's, yeah, it's time to come out that seat and, you know, run the business. And I'm like, what to do? We have to stay at home, at home. What to do? So, you know, because we constantly had to wear masks, our day to day living was going to the grocery store. That was fun. Going Putting Clorox wipes on our uh, grocery bags and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, it was, it was a wild time. Yeah. So, you know, that mask, we start having a lot of acne. So I start looking into my skin. I start looking at, and I, and I was inspired by all the people online doing these big things and creating this business. I'm like, what? what's my passion? And when I start looking at my face, I'm like, okay, I use all these products. Let me look at the back of these products and see what I can look up, I can research. So I start researching and trying things that fit me, fit my face being that I was, I hit 40 during uh, COVID and it seemed like that 40, it, skin started doing what it wanted to do. I was like, wait a minute, come on. I treat you well. <laughs> Don't cut up on me now. Yeah. So, but but here, this is interesting. I'm gonna let you keep going. But it sounds like you're one of the people that would say, if someone else can do it, I can do it. Like, well, why, why, why am I not doing it? Also, that's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, and uh, I, not that I bore out easily, but I'm easily challenged. I, I got you. I have to. Yeah. I have to challenge myself. I have to put myself in a crunch. And that motivates me to work even harder. Yeah. Put me in a box, I'm going to come out. Okay. 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 So, and, and that's what really motivated me to start trying ingredients. It took me two years to bring it into fruition. And when I did, you know, I invested in me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bet on myself. Yeah. Yeah. So so tell us about the line. Like what, what can people expect? What's that experience like working with your products? So with my products, they actually work. <laughs> Let's be clear. They actually work. She gave the disclaimer. They, so it's not like those bags that was fake. Exactly. They, okay, okay. It's, we got to make works. sure. We have our toners. We have our wash. And I actually use my products as well. Um, 
I don't have any sunscreen, but I'm going to get that. I have a, now I have a rose set. It's a six in one box and it basically takes you down to the scrubs, um, the facial washes, um, also the oils that you need for your skin. I have vitamin C oils. Um, I wish I would have brought you one. No, hey, we, we still got a chance to do this later. You know this? So it's definitely yeah. good for the skin. Definitely. Uh, and I'll patronize it. You you don't have to give it to me. I, I, I will support just because you're giving me some time today, which I'm grateful. But at the same time, I'm always interested in elevating people in our community. Whatever we're doing, I want to be a part of it. You know, so... Um, the six in one box, is that good for gift giving? You know, we got the holidays coming around the yeah, corner. It definitely is okay. good, uh, good for gift giving. Um, being that I'm older, um, I need a lot of retinol in my skin. Okay. So I definitely moisturize. My face is really dry. I didn't like using a lot of steroids in my face and a lot of, uh, medical things, uh, for my face. So I started using my, uh, my serums and my creams, my retinol cream, and my face been doing a good good job okay so, uh for anybody who has dark uh circles up under their eyes i do have creams for that as well um so you got to moisturize 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 and, and and just is that your passion then like i know i know you've done oil and gas i know you've done the tax preparation tax software i know you love all of those but is this skincare line like your baby yeah that's okay my, that's my baby uh, my skincare line makes me think it makes me study. It makes me read more. This is an area that this is my uncomfortable place. Gotcha. Um, I was I, becoming complacent is not a good thing. So this is my uncomfortable place. I'm still trying to mold my baby into, OK, you know, and to break down where it's OK, Cynthia, you're not going to always make a profit to, hey, try it out yeah. try it for yourself. You know, passing out samples, asking, you know, hey. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel. So those are my uncomfortable places, you know, because that's I'm not comfortable in that area. I'm still studying. I'm still learning. I'm still seeking knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So three questions now. This is some of my rapid fire. So these are the surprise things that you would know. Give yourself 20 years prior to now. What would you have told yourself as a starting entrepreneur? If I... 20. Yeah, 20 years prior, when you were first getting started, Cynthia was bringing that laptop to football games or wondering what was the next step. What would have been advice you would have given yourself 20 years before? Bring your pen and paper. Okay. Um, because I've changed that now. Then write it down. Write the vision down. Um, also, study. Do your research. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be upset when they don't give you the information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, do your own investigation. Um, learn what you want to become. Yeah, and and you're right about specifically doing your own research because people will gatekeep things. Oh, and, yes. and for like, there's not enough out there for all of us. Right, right. <laughs> and I am one person and that's why i also i didn't mention i do teach okay as okay well, uh, tax preparation and uh scaling uh those who are in the business because i saw so many gatekeepers yeah. that's what motivated me to want to teach and want to go out and help others build their brand i built mine you yeah know? Um, but while you're building your brand and searching for software buy my software i'll be sure to help you <laughs> Let's plug it again. What's the software? What's the software? Seismic Tax Solutions. Okay, okay. Hey, we we this is where passive income lives. We need to we need to make sure we got that under the description today, so we'll get that detail. Okay, second second rapid fire. Um, what's a what's a mistake or a, a failure that you had as you've been growing and building out your business that you wished you would have had a coach or someone around to help you get through? In the beginning, I didn't manage money well. Okay. I would say having a money management coach or I teach this now um, when you're in the tax prep business and you have that's a lot of money in a three month time span. Yeah. You have to be able to manage that. You know, that was one of my biggest mistakes is living life on the edge. Whereas twin said Lil Uzi had those shoes. Guess what? They had them shoes because Lil Uzi had those shoes. Yeah. And that wasn't the proper way to do things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I could imagine that 
Um, it's almost like hitting the lottery. You know, you you get a big pool of money and it's supposed to last 12 months, but we probably only make it last till May. And again, it's like that, yeah. you know, um, whereas you're not, it's, it's a lot for our community, our culture. And sometimes when we're young and where I'm from, we wasn't, I was not taught okay. for money management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until, you know, I had to go through mistakes to yeah. learn uh, learn these things and then finally getting a financial advisor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, the people who watch this show and know me, they, they kind of know what I do in, in real life, you know, behind the, from behind the camera. Uh, there's nothing more important than knowing how to break a dollar down, like knowing what goes to expenses, what goes to overruns, what goes to employees, what goes to making sure you can reinvest. Like a lot of people that think that dollar is theirs, when in reality, you probably get 20 cents of that, like in the, in the grand scheme of things. But it takes time to get comfortable with not taking that entire dollar. Yes. It, it, it just it just doesn't feel right when you've worked so hard mm -hmm. and you've put a lot of effort into something that you say, man, I only made 20% of this. And you sit back, but if you do it the right way, it adds, it adds up. up. And, and that's what a lot of times people don't get. Okay, last mage question, and I've got one more follow-up. If you had the opportunity to just give someone, let's say $20,000 with no strings attached, they wanted to start something, do something, how would you help them navigate that investment? And the reason why I use 20,000 is because most people, when they start a business, they're gonna spend anywhere from 10 to $50,000, like just, just out the gate, whether that's in software, marketing, um, equipment, space, rent, utilities, whatever it is, you're going to be at a deficit that first year, but mm -hmm. ten to fifty thousand dollars, and no, no one knows that until you've spent it. Right. So, if you had the ability to say, "I'm going to give someone twenty thousand dollars," what would you recommend them to use that money on? If I'm giving them the twenty thousand um, dollars, they would already should already have their vision. Okay. Uh, because if I give you twenty thousand dollars and I have to tell you what to do, that's not your passion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Therefore, you're gonna spend that money. <laughs> I know you're gonna spend it. <laughs> give me twenty thousand dollars. I know where I can go. With. But if they if they have a vision of what they want to do, and my next question before I write my check out or give them anything, okay, let me see what you wrote down about your business. Tell me about it. Okay. Because if you don't have a story behind what you want to do, it makes no sense for me to. I just basically gave you twenty thousand dollars to spend. Okay. Okay. So you said twenty thousand dollars to think. So you say they need to already have a vision in place. And I can't give them my vision because if I give them <clears> my <throat> vision, it's not their passion and they, they'll they burn out easily. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're not going to have my same hustle. No, I no, I agree with that. Yeah. OK, so I, this that's a new one. I, I haven't had I asked this question or iteration of this question a lot. And no one really goes to a vision. They usually talk about maybe getting some coaching, some education, helping with some real estate. But you're saying they need to have a vision before we even have that conversation. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So your vision next five years, where do you see C and J or the skincare line or, or all of those? What do you see in the next five years? The next five years, I see myself uh, doing more coaching on scaling uh, people who are coming into the tax business and scaling my software to the next level. Um, this past year has been tremendous. I basically work off volume. Nice. Um, I'm the low person on the totem pole, but I work off volume. You made a comment about, I think, about five cents, or uh, that 20%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no one thinks about the dollar, but you're only making the 20 cents. Yeah. I capitalize off the 20%. I don't want the rest of the yeah. dollar. And that's yeah. how I scale my software business. And I share what's passive income. They don't know the secrets behind what goes on. In the software, I don't make money on the front end. I make money off of them using the software. Yeah, yeah. So what I do is I share those secrets that they don't tell them about because I my business work off volume. I give them the 80%, I keep the 20, but I have 100 people giving me 20%. Yeah. So I'm actually maxing them out even on their 80 because I have 100 people giving me 20%. 
No, nah, I, I see that. Those are the, those are the type of conversations that people need to hear um, because most people are chasing the money versus chasing the volume in relationships. Right. And you know, the, the you can do much greater um, impacting more people than trying to catch one big fish. Correct. You know, and so that's there's a lot. Exactly how I pretty much run my business. I built the relationship. Yeah. And I give them, hey, this is what you would you can take the 80 percent. Yeah. You can look at me. You can take 95. I still have 100 people giving me 5%. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And guess what? They're smiling. I built a great relationship. They're going to tell somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Loyalty is built there for sure. And then I'm going to let them know that they can be a me too. Yeah. You can have your own software. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, hey, forget let who me, I am. Yeah. Come for me. <laughs> I'll make you great. Nah, that that is great. Okay, so tell the people where they can find you, how they can get in touch, and if, you know, there's going to be people interested. Hell, I'm interested. How can we get involved in what you're doing? Okay, uh, on Instagram, uh, my Instagram is no dollars, no cent. I do check my DMs. Um, not every day, but every other day. I definitely check my DMs. Um, I can put my email address out there or definitely not my telephone number. Nah, we got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My email address is Cynthia.Smith80 at Outlook.com, or you can always reach me on Instagram, no dollars, underscore, no cent, C-Y-N-T, and you can definitely DM me. Uh, And on my personal social media is links to my software, my skincare, and the tax franchise. So you can hit either one of those social media social media handles and find me now now where can people um file a complaint for those fake purses that you sold Don't <laughs> like we need where can they get uh, a refund for that um what you call it uh Louis- Louis- <laughs> the statue of limitations is over <laughs> when i sold those cherry uh Louis Vuittons. <laughs> no, cynthia this has been great thank thank you for giving us some time Uh, This has been Horseman Academy um, for the second week of October. Y'all tap in. Make sure you all connect. um, Go out. We'll have some clips that come out of this as well. So um, y'all get to know Cynthia and the next Fortune 500 business and the tax preparation world. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We're out.